So I'm really into R and B music. Okay. So I listen to a lot of Brent Fire, Brent Fire, Giveon, Bryson Tiller. Giveon, man, that that last Giveon was a yeah. give or take. That was That's one of the was. best R and B albums I heard. <laughs> it just in a minute. I was, I was honestly cool before I, like before I pressed play on the yeah. album. <laughs> Like when the album finished, I was like, "Dang, bro! I just feel like I just went through a whole bunch of emotions That's just now." I'm saying, bro, this is the thing. Like, I like R&B music, but I don't because when you <laughs> listen to it, like Drake, "Take Care," you listen to it, you like be in a good mood. Like, jeez, bro, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. Like, you know, you know, think about this is 88.3 WLFC. I am Jeremiah Jackson, aka Kage Level TV, and with me today we have Devin Stover. Yes, sir. Yeah, my name's Devin Stover. I'm actually a pharmacy major here. Just completed my last year on the basketball team here. Mm-hmm. It's all good. Trying to focus on what's next now. Yeah. Now, I was a color commentator and salad reporter for yep. a lot of y'all's games. So mm-hmm. how do you think your your last season went? Honestly, I'll be completely honest. It didn't go as expected. We still did all right. Mm-hmm. It didn't go good. It didn't go bad. But at the end of the day, like, I enjoyed the guys I was with. Team yeah. was good. Team chemistry was all connecting on all levels so at the end of the day it went well in that term yeah Yeah. and now did you start with basketball like was basketball your first sport honestly it was football football okay i know you know a little bit yeah a little bit about football football. i was actually uh so when i started when i was younger i was like o-line then as i like stretched out i became receiver Mm -hmm. i actually played in high school my freshman and sophomore year then i focused on basketball completely like what, what made you make that decision though like um so honest my dad's like six one and he said when i was born he's like ah uh, i feel like you're gonna be a football type yeah. guy so he just kind of got me introduced to that and i just fell in love with basketball mm-hmm. and he was a basketball player too he just didn't know but uh i don't know i just like the up and down i think fast pace more right. scoring not that football isn't 100 percent is and it's exciting to watch it's just like the consistent scoring is just maybe what intrigued me and like obviously slam dunks hyping yeah. up the crowd i've been okay all that. yeah definitely definitely so you think football kind of contributed to your playing style in a way oh 100 <laughs> percent. 100 obviously you know me the aggressive type yeah, player yeah. going to tactic room and i transferred that over to basketball which honestly at the age when i started a lot of people weren't doing so they yeah. weren't used to seeing it and so I kind of developed this mindset and like this mentality, this persona that people really liked, mm-hmm. and I just carried that through the my, all my years playing basketball. For yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. Do you think like you would have turned out to be a you know better football player, or do you think it turned out just fine as a I basketball player? I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, should I have stayed with basketball? The funny thing is, when uh-huh. I first started playing football, I hated it mm, you hated my it. parents actually forced me to play okay. i remember going to practice in like third grade crying like i don't want to go yeah. like y'all can't do this but now that i think about it if i really would have continued i felt like i could have been pretty good mm-hmm. like i would have played probably like receiver. receiver receiver safety was my two my two positions i can see that i can see i can see i can see safety yeah i can see safety yeah probably because i'm on a defensive side kind of biased uh-huh but i could i could definitely definitely see safety. did you ever play on the old side so i played receiver in high school and uh, the coach called me. He's like, yeah, we want you to play DB. Yeah. I'm like, why? Hey, <laughs> <You're like, "Well, laughs> I'm going to yeah. play DB. I'm a receiver. I have no DB highlights on my film. But I said, yeah, we want you to play DB. So I was like, all right. Um, and then a couple other schools wanted me at receiver. But, you know, when I came here to Finley, it was like, I just trusted the process. And it, yeah. it turned out really, really well. So mm-hmm. shout out to the coaches who recruited me. So. Yeah, man. Shout out to the coaches, too, man. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't So I was at Cleveland State, actually, before I came here for okay. a year. I got injured, and the coaches here actually took a chance on mm-hmm. me. Like, grateful, like, turned out great. Life's on the right path, obviously, mm-hmm. in a good program. So I thank God every day for that. But, like, it's yeah. just crazy the amount of stuff. You never know what's really going to happen. Right, you, yeah. you never really know. Yeah. So now talk a little about, you know, uh, you just finished up your last season. Mm-hmm. How has sports kind of taught you, like, life skills and life lessons for you mm-hmm. to take over into the real world? Well, definitely I wouldn't start with, like, the team aspect. Mm-hmm. No matter what you do, you're going to be involved with the team. You're going to have people either vouching for you, rooting for you, or people you know you are working for, Yeah. people working for you. And I feel like in that dynamic, you always have to be like, all right, here's the responsibilities of each individual, and how are we going to come together to complete this shared goal? Yeah. And, you know, being on a basketball team, football team, everybody has one goal in mind let's be the best we can possibly be let's get a championship mm-hmm. so i'll say that first communication um 
I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't always the best <laughs> communicator. I mean, the coaches will tell you that I'm mostly a quiet guy, but I was a captain this year, yeah, which is a little bit out of my comfort zone in terms of like communicating. But um, it's helped me so much. I used to be a shy kid, honestly. Okay. And that kind of helped me transform into talking to, you know, various individuals. Obviously, I had to take speech class in yeah, college. Yep, Everybody you definitely had to take that. To. Did not like that. Yeah, I that definitely helped. had my struggles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely had my struggles. Yeah, so I had to take that. And then um, I would say the last thing, you know, just caring and showing empathy. Like, not everybody's always going to have the best practice, the best game. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what are you, you going to do to pick your teammate up? What are you going to do to pick someone you work with up if they're struggling? How are you going to help them? Right. In return, they're going to help you. So someone that's always going to have your back. I would say probably those three. Yeah. yeah. And before we dive into uh, Devin Stover off the court, yeah. uh, what was your favorite moment either this year or in your career period like uh, on the basketball court? Uh, that is a tough one. I would say I'll do like an individual and a team one. Individual okay. one, I'd probably say this year when we were playing Ashland, you know, I, over here. Okay, gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> got a yep, baseline. Yep. <laughs> Almost got injured. Thankfully, thank God I didn't. That would have been tragic, but I would say that. And we won that game. Mm -hmm. um, team wise, I would say making it to the NCAA tournament my first year here and last year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Definitely. Now, who is Devin Stover off the court? Who is Devin Stover off the court? A lot of people will tell you a lot of different things. <laughs> yeah, that's what you, but all in all, they, most people say I'm a goofy guy, weird guy. Y'all don't really see that on the court. Uh, really into anime. I know you into oh, okay, anime. Okay, I see okay, in the okay, podcast. Okay, you don't okay. have to dive into that. Yeah, definitely. Really into anime, really into gamings, really into like the people, quote unquote, would say quirky stuff, yeah. weird stuff. Yeah. Um, same yeah. people who probably be watching Kardashians. I don't understand. Right. Man. I definitely, yeah. I definitely, people, Definitely place that weird label on me. Yeah, Definitely corny yeah, label yeah, on me. Exactly, but it's 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 a different dynamic when you got it and you're an athlete too. You know right, what I'm yeah, saying? Definitely. And I feel like it's a lot of people um, who watch anime, which I actually found out mm -hmm. when I started saying I watched it, and I'm like, oh, you watch, you watch yeah. this too? <laughs> well, yeah. What kind, what kind of shows you watch? Um, uh, so I started with Naruto. Then it kind of like you know, my hero was like Full Metal. Then Attack on Titan. Then like later down the line, I started One Piece, and that's like my uh, favorite. Really? That's like my favorite anime now. Everybody keeps saying One Piece. This is the thing. It's so hard for me to start something new. <laughs> but once I'm into, it, I'm like, yeah, man, I, I'm into. It. Yeah, I've been watching this for whatever. But I started with Naruto too. Mm -hmm. I would say my top three. Your top three? No order. No order. I probably would put my hero. My hero. Hunter. Okay. Hunter. Mm, that's a good one. And then. It's between Attack on Titan and uh, what's it called? Sword Art Online. I don't know if oh, you saw Sword that. Oh, Sword Art Online. Okay. You seen that? I've I've seen it, but I I'm not finished. I'm not caught up. Uh huh. Um, actually, Coach Beckley was just talking to me about I Sword Art Online. I was talking to him about <laughs> that in the summer, bro. He just talked to me. He said they got a movie that just dropped. Yeah. And he said I should be able to watch the movie without like watching the whole the whole show. Yeah. So, uh, you know. I hear a lot of things about Sword Art Online, yeah, but I'm going yeah. to double back and give it a chance. No, I'm going to give One Piece a chance. I need to. I, I haven't really watched that many of the OG mm -hmm. animes. Yeah. Like, I still haven't finished Demon Slayer. I finished the first season. Okay. And then, uh, what's the other one? With the dude who got, the like, dude. the uh, one eye. Is one like eye. Blue. He got it covered up. You know what I'm talking about? He got it covered up. Dang, you got me thinking of a manga I just read. It's uh, Butter, Butterfly. Um, it's in Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, Gojo. Okay, Gojo, 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 Gojo. Gojo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I gotta. So, people are gonna cook me. I have still yet to see the uh, JJK movie. I have still yet to see that. And I just I've been seeing the One Piece from Red movie. The I just finished the Demon Slayer movie uh -huh. that just dropped. And uh, yeah, people are gonna cook me for that. But yeah, I have yet to see that movie. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I mean, people are gonna have all sides of sorts of comments on this. But I feel like anime is so relatable, bro. So relatable. It's so yeah. relatable. It's just always about someone overcoming some type of struggle. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in any way, someone can relate to that, regardless yeah. of how you put it. Definitely. Like uh, let's per let's take Naruto for example. Like he teaches you to never give up on your exactly. dreams, and you, if you really work hard enough, you're gonna get, you're gonna accomplish your goals. So I feel like people who don't watch anime, they can at least relate to that. Exactly. I should say, like, there's a lot of characters in anime who like 
like you said, they're they're relatable and like emotionally, you attach to them characters. Hundred percent. Like whatever they going through, you feel yeah, exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> like it's you like, feel that. I'm bringing this into my real life now, man. <laughs> the, when they hate these characters, like man, I hate them too, but I kind of like them. You know, yeah. it's like it's crazy. I, and I didn't even start watching anime until probably my freshman year, mm-hmm. or like right before I was coming to college, and I was like. Cause I'm not gonna lie, I was one of the people like, why, what, what's the big deal? Like, yeah. Kind of weird. And I was like, oh, maybe it's not. For yeah. Real. So, but yeah, other than that, man, I'll say other stuff I do. I'm an avid movie goer. I just mm. saw Creed three. I don't yeah. want to give any spoilers, but yeah, that, that was that was good. Great. You saw it too? Yeah, I saw it too. It was yeah. good. It was I might good. have to see it twice, man. You gotta see it twice. I think it's the best one out of three. Hmm, let me think. Let me think, think. Let me think. Okay. Okay. Let me tell you why. Cause it's, it's okay, like okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like family. And on top of that, I just feel like it's so much, the energy level is just different. Like, I understand mm-hmm. the first two, obviously, Michael B. Jordan's character was trying to, like, come to the top, like, yeah. rise out, prove right. himself. At this point, he already had proved himself. So now it's just like, again, it's like a teamwork aspect, caring, empathy, like we were talking about earlier with, like, his, I think it's his I can't remember exactly who the character was to him, but obviously yeah. of some t- sort of, like, family member relationship. Mm-hmm. But I, I fell in love with that movie, man. Yeah, I, I think the movie was really, really good. Uh, so I, I went to see the movie with somebody, and they uh, they asked me my ranking. And I said, you know what? I'll give it a solid. I said I'll give it like a solid nine. Okay, nine or nine point five. Yeah, yeah, that's that's accurate. I wouldn't give it a ten, but that's accurate. It's high. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. definitely high. It didn't give me no uh, cause um. Dang, what was that movie? Oh, Avatar and Black Panther. Yeah. Like, those, like, the two biggest movies recently that I've seen besides Creed Mm Three, And, like, those movies, like, just, they just hit different to me. See, I'm happy you just brought that up because that's another thing I'm really into, Marvel. Marvel? Okay, okay. Marvel Cinematic Universe. I feel like if you watch anime, those almost go hand in hand. Yeah, basically hand in hand. But uh, I saw Black Panther, obviously, uh, sad while having a chat with Bozeman. Yeah. But they did a great job. Mm -hmm. Um you know giving him his his colors and all that in that movie and while still making it like an actual marvel movie and right. bringing in the new characters now i don't know if you saw that new ant-man though i haven't seen a new ant-man yet i haven't seen new ant-man gone. it's crazy it's, it's gone bring in a whole different you already okay. know like you saw, i'm pretty sure you saw the preview but yeah it's gonna bring in a whole different side of the story because i was never like high on ant-man oh yeah me as neither. like a as like a character because yeah. like in his standalone movie you know it was it was it was all right. Yeah. You know, it was all right. It did Ant Man and the Wasp was it was it was it was getting it was getting there for me. Mm-hmm. So I was like I was a little hesitant on seeing the newest Ant Man, but I'm a I'm gonna check it out because I heard a lot of good things. This is what I'll say. Each Ant Man movie has gotten better. It's got yeah, okay. All I mean, right, I'm gonna check it out. When it first came out to I was like, eh, I'll just see it. It's a Marvel movie. Like, yeah. But from that, Ant Man and the Wasp and this one, each one has gotten better. 100%. Okay. Okay, so let me who's your favorite character for the marvel series ah uh, this is what i'll say favorite character iron man iron man just because of his personality the way he goes about things how he handles it favorite superhero thor or spider-man thor or spider-man okay yeah there's a lot of I feel like Spider Man is like the top. It's, it's just like I feel like he's the most relatable yeah. one. It's because he's like around our age, going mm-hmm. through the same. But if I could have any powers, that's probably Thor. Thor. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely 100%. Thor. Shoot, I mean, my favorite character was Captain America. Really? But, you know, uh, after Captain America, I think I, I was like, you know what? It's gonna be Doctor Strange hey, now, because hey. I, I rock with Doctor Strange. That movie was crazy. That movie was crazy. I, it was. I did not expect that though. I did not expect that. I'm not gonna lie. That might have been one of the best Marvel movies I've seen since Endgame. Yeah, because it was kind of like a. Because I'm not even. I'm not even like a horror film no, guy. Yeah. But that movie like kind of was like it a horror. He was. Yeah. Yeah. Like. So, I'm not, but I liked it. Like I don't. I think it was PG-13. But I was just shocked. Some of the because you don't usually see Marvel put that type of stuff. You definitely in their don't. Movie. So yeah. I was like. Is this a right <laughs> I was like, am I in the right movie? Yeah. But it was all in all good. Now, do you keep in up with the uh, Disney Plus like Marvel series? Nah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't. me neither, man. Because I was gonna ask, like, what did you think about that? I, I need to though, because I only hear good things. Yeah. So, because I heard Loki was good. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched WandaVision, so I only hear good things. So yeah. I'm, I'm gonna definitely, definitely check it out. But uh, uh, double back into the anime. Who are some of your favorite anime characters? 
Cause you named off a, a couple of animes that I that I really really like. My favorite anime characters, Killua. Killua. Hunter Hunter. That might be top one. Top it's, one. He's just so chill. Yeah. He know he got it. It's, it's <laughs> effortless. Uh, I might try to do one from each. Naruto. That's a lot of characters. I, Naruto. Oh uh, man. Cause I was just talking to somebody yesterday on how like. Shikamaru really developed That's right before our eyes. I lowkey want to say Sasuke. Sasuke, okay. I don't want to be like that guy, yeah. but also Naruto. Like mm-hmm. it's just, it's like everything he went through. I could relate into into some way. Sasuke, yeah. I'm like, man, you. Just, he, they, I mean, they yeah. both went through some stuff. Yeah, pain. Oh, that serious. I'm just like, I don't even know. Like, do people go through this in real life? Like, I'm, I'm like. <laughs> If people have this tragic of a backstory, I might I might need to get you some help, man. But, uh, you know who I hated though, Sakura. Everybody hates Sakura. I, I there's so many times I just want to like just wish I was in there and like I just fight her for no reason, bro. Yeah. You know what's crazy though? So I talked to some uh, Japanese students here. Yeah. They said how we hate Sakura over here. They love Sakura over there. Did they say why? They didn't say why, but they just said they couldn't understand why we like hate Sakura so much. I just feel like she just, like it's not, it's a natural human emotion, but she just always like feels bad for herself and like just yes. doesn't, and then just sits there like in the fights like Naruto, Sasuke going crazy. She's just sitting there like, oh, I hope they don't get <laughs> hurt. I, I hope, I, I hope I can help. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah, and I seen she was like top. Cause it was something. It was like a Naruto top nine ninety nine. Yeah. To where like uh, the fans vote on like these characters to have like a story just written about them. Yeah. And she was like top three or five, I should say. And I was I was shocked. Really? I was shocked. Out of all shocked. the characters. Out of all the characters, I was shocked. Another one of my favorite characters would be from My Hero Academia. Obviously Deku, but Lemillion. Oh yeah, I, I really like Lemillion. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. Just do always yeah. about on, on his no negative emotions you know he had uh-huh. that power and it was like when you really looked at it i was like oh when he first came out like this power is crazy oh yeah and then i was like oh he had to do all this work just to master it like that yeah and so i kind of like characters who come up out of nothing come up character. out of nothing yeah same but i should say my favorite character from my hero is todoroki this is what i'll say if i could have any power from that series it's his, definitely 100 yeah. <laughs> percent. i feel like that's just op like you can literally do whatever you want almost like it's like especially if you get to the level that he's capable of getting to mm-hmm. and then all oh, my obviously just yeah. overpowered bro yeah definitely overpowered so, i feel like totally he's just like a cool he, he just a cool he gave me character like the killer of type vibes yeah, killer type yeah, vibes. laid back like not that he don't necessarily care but it seemed like it's just like, i got it like bro, mm-hmm. relax type yeah. dude you know what's crazy though so my favorite character from hunter hunter wasn't even in the show like wasn't even in the whole show oh so i think i know he was karapika my favorite character from hunter hunter you know what's crazy i got a tattoo oh for real Oh, you got the chain. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, man. Karabi, when I first started watching it, out of the main characters, he was my favorite character. Yeah. Because just, he, like, did his own thing. I mean, so did Leorio, mm-hmm. but kind of, like, obviously after the exams, did his own thing, got, didn't need no help. Right. Battling with didn't the, need Phantom, no help. the Phantom yeah. Troop. By himself. By himself. But you know who's another one of my favorite characters? I want. I don't know if I'm saying this right, but Meruem. Oh, Mary! Oh, yeah, yeah. The anime. I, I mean, even though he was, I think that's might be the best villain of all time in anime. It, it's it's definitely only because he did it with good intentions, still, uh-huh. and he ended up turning back good. And I just feel like that whole storyline was just crazy, and yeah. they still didn't even finish it. That storyline was crazy because was they was playing, playing Shogi, yeah, and when that uh, that one. Um, the girl had played against him and beat him. He could not. He could not win. Yes. And then he went out playing her and Shogi at the same time too. To uh, at the end because he got he. So I kind of caught Cap on like the end where uh, Marum fought. I forgot old dude's name. Oh, Netero. Netero. Yeah. Yeah. Because like hold on. Because nah. Marum he was basically dominating the whole fight for real, for real. Yeah. And then Buddy dropped like a little, like a whole nuke something oh, on, yeah, on Miro. Yeah, yeah. He kind of tanked it at first. I was like, no, it, it, it affected him, but he's kind of like, I was like, hold on, how is this man still alive right nah, now? I, I'm i not going to lie, that fight was incredible to that watch. That fight was incredible. But I'm just like, part of me is like, 
I want Netero to win. I definitely did. But at the same time, I'm like, it's, it might be a better story <laughs> if you lose. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I'm torn. And obviously, I didn't want to. Spoiler alert, man. But I didn't want to <laughs> see him. But I don't want to see him pass away. Like he was going crazy. Nah, he definitely was going yeah. crazy. You mm-hmm. think Gone in his final form could have could have beat Metro? I don't think so, bro. You don't think so? I mean, I saw what he did to Pito. Like yeah. that was that was no something. contest. Yeah, I'm gonna say. You know what? I'm gonna change my answer. I said I'll say he would have beat him, but he would have still got severely injured, just like Nutter. Just like but I think both of them would have got severely injured. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. But um, Gone and I'm not gonna lie, I was. There was a point in that series where I didn't like. Like I love Gone, but once it got to that point, he was just pure hatred All in his hate, heart. Pure hatred. And I was like, man, bro, chill. Like yeah. calm down. It's good. Yeah. But I kind of, I kind of liked the switch up because yeah. like through the whole show, he like happy super friendly, lucky, happy yeah, go lucky. Yeah. Um, and then when he saw a kite, a switch just oh, yeah. flipped, and I. I liked it because I didn't. I never seen him in that light. Oh no! And they showed a little, little different side, but that, that I think that was amazing to it me. It just showed that he could literally be like he had me thinking he was part of uh, Killer Was yeah. Zodic <laughs> family. I'm like, shoot, he got that mindset. Yeah, he been hanging around him, but no, I I liked it. It was just completely different because mm-hmm. Gon's always doing the silly stuff. Obviously, he's strong character, but. Mm-hmm. Seeing him in that light, even Killua was scared of him, and he don't oh, get, yeah. he don't get scared like that. So, yeah, and that whole dynamic with Killua and his brother, I think that was like kind of cool too. Oh, how yeah. like uh, how uh, Killua like just basically had basically shackles in his brain, yeah, like holding him back, and he kind of like kind of released that towards the end of the show. And I, again, I think that's another example of just how it's relatable. Mm-hmm. People got these things that hold them back, and you're the only one who could really. Yeah. eventually change it that's why i like anime so much yeah definitely man so talk uh you're you said you're a pharmacy major mm-hmm. um and exercise science um what are the next steps with that so i got my exercise science degree almost a year ago now in may and then i got accepted into the pharmacy program this school year so after this year i'll have two more years left of school mm-hmm. and then one year rotations where i go around just basically completing a checklist and i'll get my degree okay so as of now my plans after i finish all that is to work as a pharmacist in a hospital okay um either in ambulatory pharmacy or inpatient pharmacy which basically is um i could either work in an emergency room as a pharmacist or i can have regular patients that i'm seeing um and basically prescribe them as like, here, have you been taking this medication? How has it been affecting you? Do you need more? Do you need less? I just, well, one, I've always enjoyed helping people personally. I feel like that's like just been a passion of mine. Um, And then I like the idea of seeing people regularly building that um, trust, building that rapport with them. And it just makes me feel good. I don't know how else to say it, man. Yeah, so that's kind of like your your goal? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. That's my goal. I mean, I have side stuff I want to do, if I'm being honest. Like, I know you're doing a podcast and everything. Yeah. Like, I've been really into, like, um, I just got a sewing machine this Christmas. Okay. I wanted to get into, like, making my own clothes. Not necessarily. I don't want to start, like. A clothing a brand. A clothing brand, at least not yet, but just making them for myself, you know, mm-hmm. learning how to make stuff. Um, I've been really into music. A couple of years ago, we had a dude on the team named Andrew Emmerich, who uh, actually was making music, and okay. then he got me into that. We was all doing it as a team, like just as a joke. And then me and him started making. I'm like, I'm actually into this. Like, yeah. Not necessarily like I have to like make it somewhere, but just as a hobby to pass time. And stuff. Okay. So, just, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, yeah, I just feel like it's a lot of stuff I want to do. So, yeah. yeah. So you mentioned music. So who's some like your favorite artists, or who like, who who would you? The number one artist is Drake, man. Oh. My <laughs> <goodness>. <laughs> <laughs> top artist is Drake, uh, hands man. down. Okay, Drake is like the top artist right now. I you you not a fan, bro? <laughs> no, nah, I, I like Drake. <laughs> <laughs> but I just hear it because I like my favorite artist is Kanye. All time is Kanye. Ah, so I hear a, I get a whole bunch of, you know, Isley. Yeah. He talk he down Drake, on Kanye every dude. time he get because he a Drake fan. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, it's, it's his Drake fans that I've encountered with talk down on Kanye. See, I'm not one of them. I'm going to hype Kanye up. Yeah. Obviously, I don't know. I'm assuming you. Saw, if you a Kanye fan, you saw that documentary on Netflix. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, man, that, that was amazing. That documentary, I already liked his music before, but it just gave a whole new meaning. Like mm-hmm. when you realize like the struggle or the things people had to go through to get somewhere, I just right. feel like it makes everything more meaningful. Mm-hmm. So after listening to that, he actually moved up on my artist list. Like I don't think I would have had Kanye 
personally in my top ten, mm-hmm. he might be in my top five now. I'm not even gonna yeah. lie. Uh, but nah, no slander here, man. Drake's not. <laughs> Drake just. We keep talking about this relatable aspect. Drake to me just somehow in some way just relate in every single song, bro. Okay. Okay. And I just think that's why people like him so much is just because you, like, the, whoever is most relatable, they're going to most likely be the most popular. Yeah. Kanye got his own different vibe, his own different flow, don't really care what people think of him. And I like that mindset, too. Mm-hmm. I think it's good to have a mindset like that in certain circumstances. And, you know, he doing his whole thing. I'm talking about clothing brand. And oh, music. yeah, yeah. He, he doing both of those himself. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm trying to think. Kanye got classics like Gold I mean, Digger, classics, Flashing man. Lights. Classics, I'm talking about yeah, yeah, classics. classics. Slow Jams <laughs> might be my favorite, you know. But I don't know. I would say I listen to Drake the most. Um, in terms of, I'm really into R&B music. Okay. So I listen to a lot of Brent Fire, Brent Fires. Give Me On, Bryson Tiller. Give Me On, man. That, that last Give Me On, was it yeah. Give or Take? That was That's one of was. the best R&B <laughs> albums I've heard it just, in a minute. I was, I was honestly cool. Before I, like before I press play on the yeah. album, I, like when the album finished, I was like, "Dang, bro! I just feel like I just went through a whole bunch of emotions That's just what now." I'm saying, bro, this is the thing. Like, I like R&B music, but I don't because when you <laughs> listen to it, like Drake, take care. You listen to it, you like be in a good mood. Like, jeez, man, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. Like, you know, you know, think about do I need somebody right now? Man? Yeah. But um, I listen to even female artists like SZA, Summer yeah, so, Walker. Oh, yeah, that was that. Her album was good. Um. I'm not gonna lie, not an Ice Spice fan. I, I don't, not that I don't like Ice Spice, but I just don't get to her music. That's what I'm saying. I listen to a lot of the same artists. I should say. I would agree with that too. I've been trying to branch out. Um, I've been trying to listen to a lot more old school music too, because mm, I know yeah. you know nowadays a lot of artists sample old, old school music, yeah. and so sometimes I'm like, where is this from? I know I heard it before, and I like search it up, and I'm like, let me listen to this song. I'm like, I like it. Mm-hmm. So. But what artists you listen to besides Kanye? Sure, man, Kanye. Uh, I'm a big Kendrick fan as well. Okay. Um, big Rod Wave fan. You a um, J Cole fan? I am a J Cole fan too. I feel like you. So, do you like that more? Like, like I don't want to say conscious rapper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I. I don't like saying that term. No, I know that's why I didn't want to say it. But, but I don't you know, know what I, I don't yeah, know what exactly. other way to say it. Yeah. Yes, I should say. Uh, a lot. I feel like a lot of rappers nowadays, they either uh, sound the same, they sound like other artists, or there's not like much substance to what they're talking about. And I just can't relate to that. I ain't gonna lie. Like I need, I need you to talk about something. Yeah. Some artists, like a lot of artists nowadays, they t- they do talk about some stuff, yeah. but it's just sometimes like with their message un- unrelatable to me. You yeah. know, so I just can't vibe to the music. I feel like certain rappers, like you say, either sound the same or if they preach in a message, it's mm-hmm. the same general message that every other person that, Yes, definitely. That's another reason why I like Drake mm-hmm. is because, I mean, he be, you know, just like any other, he be doing some of the same stuff. But for the most part, he rap about stuff that's going on that nobody know about, like mm-hmm. J. Cole, Kendrick, all those artists rap about stuff that's going yeah. on personally or people going through. Right. Which... I personally just find more relatable. I just don't understand why Kendrick and J. Cole aren't on the same level as Drake, to be honest. I mean, I mean, I don't know if it's the way Drake's doing it or how, but I find all three of them extremely relatable. I know there's a point where people say, like, those might be the top three. Oh, yeah. Oh, in terms yeah. of, like, the new generation. I seen Kendrick was, uh, he was number two on, like, uh, was it Billboard? Or it was somebody's uh, top top 50 rappers of all time. Yeah, and uh, Kendrick been. was number two. Really? Who did he have a number one? Jay Z was number one. Okay, yeah. but I think I don't. I don't. I don't. The whole list is discredited because Kanye who? was at number uh, uh, eleven. Eleven. So I don't. I don't. I don't count that list. If you had to do a top five all time, all time. Sheesh. Okay, top five all time. Okay, I gotta take out my bias. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta take out my bias. So, but then again, Kanye Kanye is gonna be in there. But he's not, I, think, I think Kanye will be in there. He's going to be yeah. in there. But top five of all time, this is tough. This is tough. Or if you had to, throw in some artists that you listen to that you would put in the greatest all-time category. Okay. Um, um, Jay-Z, mm-hmm. Kanye. Andre 3000. I, 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 I loved Andre. One, but yeah. I, would, I would put him up there. Uh... Drake, cause I need, cause I need a different sound, and none yeah. of those artists right there are gonna give me a sound like Drake. Yeah. 
That's four right there. Yeah. Yes, yeah, four. And I'm trying not to put this artist in here, but I'm gonna have to put him in there. Well, <laughs> I'm trying like who. I don't want to just because I'm, I'm if I throw in Kendrick, I'm forgetting. I'm put, not putting no, so many other artists about. in there. I feel like there's so many artists you could put like in the top fifty, top twenty five that could be interchangeable, just depending on who you asking. Yeah, and it's not like any of them will be invalid either. Yeah, like obviously, Drake gonna be my number one choice, uh-huh. all hands down. Now, out of the artists I listen to. I'm probably gonna throw Jay Z in there. Jay Z, um, yeah, cause I love Jay Z's discography. Him and Kanye, like I, those oh, yeah, two discographies least, right uh, there. Was it Watch the Throne? Yeah, Watch the Throne. I thought yeah. they were supposed to be doing another one. I honestly would put Kanye in there. Now, that's where it get hectic after that. Well, Not, you said you said straight off. You said straight off hip hop, straight off rap. No, you oh, can do R and B too. Okay. Okay, I mean, then, I'll put Michael Jackson in there too, bro. Yeah, okay. Then I gotta kind of yeah, ruffle yeah, my yeah. list up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, because I need some different. In terms of mine, like I feel like Drake, Michael Jackson automatically give me different vibes. Yes, than the rest, but I still yes. need those other those other sounds. Okay. Um. And then my last one, I'm not gonna lie, I might put Prince in there. Man. Prince in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If I go to like for like the artists that I listen to the most in my lifetime. Then I'm gonna say this is gonna be really unpopular list now. <laughs> I'm gonna say Kanye, Drake, Kendrick, mm-hmm. and then I gotta throw this artist named Sinead Arnett in there. Really? She's a uh, she's an R&B artist. Like I, her discography is amazing to me. Uh, and then in the last spot, I'm gonna say shoots. I'm, I'm gonna throw in two people. Okay. Oh, actually, hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to John Legend. Cause That's a good one. His man. discography, his in eighth grade. Once I listened to his "Love in the Future" album, that had me that had me hooked right there. That is a good one. You know who I would throw in there? I don't know why this just made me think of it, but Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys, yeah, yeah. Alicia Keys, man, love her sound, love her music, and there's certain artists I listen to just because I specifically like the way they sound too. Mm-hmm. Like they good, but like Summer Walker, for example, example, I think her voice sounds amazing. Right. Um, SZA, uh, Ty Dolla Sign. Ty Dolla Sign. Oh yeah, his voice is incredible. I know he's that not really on the same level as a lot of people, but if you're talking about solely voice, I would put him up there. Mm-hmm. Um, Jacquees. Jacquees. Um, and then one more I probably would throw in there. He's more so of a rapper type singer. Is um, Tusi. I don't know if you heard of him. Tusi. Tusi. Yeah. 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 He opened up for. Uh, Rob Wave, I yep. believe, when I went Probably, to go see him. Because I know they they got similar type of music. Yeah. So, yeah. I really like Rob Wave, too. Yeah. I know there's some slander going on out there. <laughs> I know there's some slander going on out there. I'm it's not going to say he my favorite. I'm not going to say I listen to him all the time, but uh-huh. I still like him. Uh. Yeah, there's definitely, definitely some slander. But yeah. uh, I don't want to mention I'll throw in there, too, is like, cause, um, you know, you kind of pick up your parents' favorite artists' Uh-oh, music. Yep. So, like, I always, like, every single every single morning on, like, Saturday and Sunday, I always woke up to Anthony Hamilton. Okay, so, the old school. <laughs> so old school music. So I'm a I'm gonna throw uh I'm gonna throw him in there as well. Yeah. And now to close out this uh interview, um anything, any shout outs, um, anything you wanna say to the people out there? Man, you know, I just wanna shout out, you know, whole University of Finley, you know, everybody changed me, you know, the coaching staff, Coach Shardo, Coach Ernst, teammates. Um, you obviously for having me on this podcast, man. I appreciate it. Parents, God, I could go on and on, but you know, everybody's made me who I am today, you know, to even get me to this position I'm at now. Yeah. So yeah. And now who who would you like to see next on the show? Next on the show? You gotta get Izzy on the show, man. I gotta, Izzy. I gotta get Izzy. I gotta get Izzy on the show. I feel like y'all gonna have a lot to talk about. Yeah, I do some si- sort of collab, man. Yeah, y'all figure sure, it out. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely yeah. gonna make that happen. Definitely yeah. gonna make that happen. Um, this has been 88.3 WLFC, uh, Kage Level Convo, and we are out.